Coming up on iOS Today, Rosemary Orchard and I have some accessories that we want you to check out. Yes, it's accessories and travel stuff for the iPad, the iPhone, and everything in between. So stay tuned for our suggestions. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by BlockFi. BlockFi's Bitcoin Rewards credit card lets you earn an unlimited 1.5% back in Bitcoin on all qualifying purchases, plus a bonus of $25 in crypto after you make your first purchase. Sign up today at BlockFi.com slash iOS. Whoa! Hello there, and welcome. Welcome, welcome to iOS Today, the show where every week we talk all things iOS, tvOS, HomePod OS, iPad OS, Watch OS. I may have said that already, I don't know, but there are all of these OSs that Apple has on offer, and we talk about them here on the show. And uh, I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. And I am Rosemary Orchard. Hi, everyone. Hello out there, world. Uh, Today is the day. Uh, We, of course, have had our iPhones now for a period of time and have walked about with them as much as uh, is possible. And, uh, you know, we've had iPads in our our hands and in our uh, pockets in some cases because the little mini is is pretty small. And uh, I thought it'd be a good time to kind of do a follow-up where we talk about accessories we have that we use uh, you know, relatively regularly. Uh, sometimes uh, the, some of these accessories might be ones that have taken a back seat because of the pandemic, but um, maybe they're starting to make their way back out again. And so I thought now would be the perfect time to talk about some of those things that we use on the regular or we want to suggest to others. So Rosemary, let's start with one of yours because this is a pretty pricey uh, device, but it is one that I think serves a very good purpose. So tell me about it. Yeah, this is the most expensive one on my list for, you know, clarity. Uh, so this is the Apple MagSafe Duo. So it is uh, a MagSafe puck uh, on one side of the Duo. And then on the other side, it's a watch uh, charger, which you can pop up um, or fold back down flat, depending on what kind of strap you've got. Now, on the one hand, this is pretty pricey. You can buy the Apple Watch charging cable and you can buy the MagSafe cable for less than the two of these combined. Um, it does That said, fold up into quite a small, neat package. And the thing that really makes it sing is the fact that you use one cable to charge it. And I don't know about you, Micah, whenever I'm in a hotel room, there are just never enough plugs. Never, never, ever, ever. Um, And even if I take, you know, a good multi-port charger with me, which I do, um, it's it's a little difficult to, you know, find enough places to charge all things. And quite frankly, just having extra cables running around is frustrating. So I ended up with one of these. I did not buy this from Apple. I went on eBay. I found somebody uh, selling them, um, you know, that clearly a, a store overbought these things. Um, and so I was able to get it much cheaper, which, you know, was really helpful. Um, so I have a MagSafe Duo. I took it on holiday. I used a 20 watt charger with it. It was great. It was a perfect by the bed charger. Um, There is something I should note, which is a little difficult to demonstrate, but I will do my best. So this is an iPhone 13 Pro, not a Max, just a Pro. And if I pop this on here, then uh, when you line it up, um, and I'm just going to try and tilt this in the right direction so you can actually see the camera bump is just about touching (sighs) um, here on the 13 Pro. And if I get the case, which I've taken off my iPhone because I wanted to be able to do this quite quickly, um, this is a little difficult to magnetize on it. There is like a tiny little gap right there. Uh, This is really difficult to show off. Um, But there is a tiny, tiny, tiny gap. So it does kind of push it away. But I've not had any problems charging with this. I used it extensively over the weekend um, as prep for the show to make sure. um, So that, you know, there is no problem with this. It it works fine. Um, But, you know, it... It is pricey, but if you do just want one small charger that you can just keep in your bag um, to be able to charge both your Apple Watch and your your iPhone at the same time, it's a good option. Um, And I would recommend waiting until um, maybe you've got some trade-in vouchers from Apple or, um, you know, because you found an old iPhone hanging around your house that you 
thought you'd already traded in. Uh, I know that happened to Matthew Casanelli, your, your host on Smart Tech Today recently. Uh, he tweeted about that or, you know, Christmas, uh, other holidays are coming. Maybe ask mm-hmm. for Apple Store vouchers or something for that and then you can you can get it uh, and it won't feel quite as pricey. But it is a really good charger. I'm impressed with it. Um, but uh, it, yeah, there, there are a lot of advantages to it. I love the fact that it will fully charge my iPhone and my Apple Watch full speeds. It's good, but uh, we'll see. Uh, and then we had a question in the chat. Is it USB-C? So this actually has lightning with it. Um, and so that right there is a lightning port. And then um, it, a, the other end of the cable that comes with it is USB-C, but this is using lightning. Um, so if you are already traveling with a lightning cable, this is this is ideal. If not, yeah. uh, you can get magnetic cables. I've had some good luck recently with the charge ASAP cables. Um, and you could just pop a, well, the magnetic uh, dongles into that and then attach the magnetic cable to that, um, which I'm not doing at the moment. It may happen in the future. We'll see. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I, it makes sense to me that it's lightning uh, because that way, you know, if you've already got a cord there for your iPhone, uh, now it, it can be plugged into the back of that as well. And then you've suddenly got a, a device that charges both your Apple Watch and your iPhone at the same time. Um, speaking of little travel devices, I wanted to mention uh, Mophie. They, it, it rather makes a charge stream travel kit that I've had for quite some time. It comes in a little uh, black pouch with a, a clip on the front of it. And when you open it up, Inside is a little um, car charger. So, well, it's an adapter for a car, uh, a standard um, AC adapter, and then a tiny little uh, rectangle or square, rather. I don't know why I said rectangle, um, although I guess a square is a rectangle. And this is uh, just a little tiny wireless charger. It's a little Qi charger. So you can take this and drop it onto um, a surface in, you know, a, a a hotel or you know at a friend's house whenever you're staying there you plug it in and it will uh serve as a little charger for your iPhone now what i like about this is that it comes in this little pouch that has um multiple areas, multiple pockets for you to uh, store all of these different things. It is, it's an older device. And so it is USB-A. Um, and the thing that plugs into the back of the actual uh, Qi charger is actually micro USB. So uh, it's it's pretty old school. But with those extra pouches, I have the ability to store um, more than just the cord that it comes with. It comes with a very, very long cord, but I just also keep a little Apple Watch charging puck inside of this. And so because this has been my go-to before these newer devices had come out, I just have kind of never uh, needed to replace it because anytime it comes time for me to have to go somewhere uh, overnight, I just pop this into my bag and I've got everything that I need right there in the bag, uh, good to go. So it's, uh, yeah, this is kind of wild. Right now you can find it on Amazon for $5.74. So if you're looking for like a USB-A charger for your car and you also want to get um, a little portable um, Qi charger, then you might want to check this out because yeah, it's uh, very inexpensive right now. So Again, a little old school. There are more modern chargers that are going to charge your phone and uh, your watch uh, and all that kind of stuff faster. But for um, the, for its time, uh, this still works just fine for me. I, I love having this little pouch that I just I know everything's in there. I don't touch anything in here um, outside of whenever it comes time to need to do travel. And that way it always stays in there, good to go. And now for six bucks, I've seen it uh, like 15 bucks in some places, six bucks on Amazon. (laughs) This is kind of a a no brainer for if you just want to add kind of an extra to your kit just to have, uh, to have and to hold, as they say. Um, All right. Tell us uh, what's next from you, Rosemary. Well, one of the next things, I uh, actually came in a pack of two, and this is the other end of the price range. It's not quite as cheap as $6. That is a great deal. Over here in the UK, it's about £40 pounds for that uh, set mica. This is a Moco foldable stand. Now, this Ooh. folds down to practically nothing. It is incredibly thin when it folds, um, and you can just pop it up, and then you've got a variety of different angles that you can position the stand at, which allows you to do things like you could pop your iPhone on there, which is quite good if you you know you want to watch a bunch of videos. You could pop it down and land landscape mode if you don't have a charger, um, another kind of stand with you. But of course, this small one, they come in a variety of sizes. They also come in a much bigger size. But I found even the small one 
works pretty well with the iPad mini. Um, so I'm going to put the iPad mini on there the other way around because I've got a little charging uh, port in there. Um, but if I pop it on there, that is, you know, quite stable and secure. I can pop it on landscape mode. And this just gives me a few more options for angles than other devices um, or other stands might. For example, the, the case built onto my iPad mini. Um, so this, this is good just because it gives me those options. You can pop a MagSafe puck, um, you know, on your phone behind here that the MagSafe G behind your phone is going to create a bit of a an extra bump there that's a little weird uh to do that um but this is a great very cheap stand i believe they are nine dollars for two of them on amazon um so four dollars fifty each uh for people doing the maths with me um and it, it just gives you some options to prop your phone up um and this also comes in handy for photography um you know we, we did talk about the the joby mount uh recently and that is fabulous um you know if you're planning on taking pictures but if you're not necessarily planning on taking pictures and you just keep this in your pocket because as i said it folds down to practically nothing then you can use it to prop your phone up um, to take a photo somewhere, which, you know, I've taken group photos with these things before. I've had these for ages. I've got two of them and they are just refusing to fall apart. It's brilliant. I love them. Wow. Yeah, I like that. It's a simple little product, but there's so much, it's so versatile, so much you can do with it. Um, which yeah, is yeah. Quite nice. They come in different colors as well. So I just got two of the the black ones, but I think they do blue, purple, red, and white as well. So you get a couple of different options there. And, you know, because there's two, one for you, one for a friend, um, or stick one in someone's Christmas stocking uh, if it's uh, that sort of thing for you. But uh, yeah, it, it's a good option, I find, to just keep in my bag um, wherever I'm going. And then I've always got an option to stand up my iPhone if I want or need to. Nice. Um, this next one comes from uh, a company near and dear to my heart because they are near and dear to my physical location. Um, this is Waterfield Designs. They're SF bags. These are bags that are made uh, in San Francisco, which is just down the road from where I live. And they make, I just have to say it, an incredibly gorgeous uh, bag that is, it's a, it's a sling. Uh, it's called the Sutter Tech Sling. And it is this um, rectangular bag that you sling over your back. And if, if we can show, actually, there's a, a, a photo, I think, that really shows kind of it placed on the back um, uh, while, while I kind of talk about this. So what I love about the bag is that it is like purpose built to be a sling. Um, up at the top, we've got a little uh, D ring that the strap is connected to. And so the strap can move kind of freely left and right on this sling. So if you want to sling it on your left shoulder or your right shoulder, it's very easy to do. The D-rings that are at the bottom of the bag, they have, um, the, the bottom of the strap has a little clasp that you can unclasp and then put it on the other side. So that way you can switch between uh, shoulders as you want to. And let me try to get it back on there now. <laughs> um, and then trying to do it one-handed is a little difficult. Um, it comes with a nice padded shoulder strap that has Velcro, so you can take it off. And let's just... I love that sound. Nice. Um, it also, as every bag from uh, Waterfield is, uh, does, it smells amazing. Um, so what I like about it is that there's this easy access pouch in the front. Um, this is the, the waxed canvas varietal and variety. And there are zippers on both sides of this front pouch. So I can zip down on the left or zip down on the right to be able to access what's in the bag uh, in this front pouch. And what's cool, and it's got this gorgeous orange color inside too. Um, what's cool about that is it, that, that serves multiple purposes because you can use it kind of as a pouch that you just drop things into, but you could also fold up or roll up a, uh, a, a jacket and sort of sling it through this thing as if it were just a loop uh, upon which you can you can store you know your, your, your jacket or what have you. So there's multiple reasons why you would want um, it's kind of the zippers on both sides, but you can just use one or the other. Now, when I open this up and I like that it comes down about I would say four fifths of the way of the bag so that it can very much open up. There's this excellent pouch inside with um, 
oh, it's almost like a, a like faux Sherpa um, material that's inside of here. It's very soft thing. And it's like, even if I'm, if I'm just feeling kind of stressed out, I could stick my hand in here and just sort of feel this nice, uh, soft embrace of this sort of fleecy material. But inside... I can put a whole dad, dadgum iPad in there. Um, so your, your standard size, you know, 11 inch iPad fits right inside of that slot. And that's often what I put inside um, of, of this bag is an 11 inch iPad. Um, this is the, I believe there, there are two sizes. There's the, um, the smaller one, which I can't think. Oh yeah. Compact and full. I have the compact one, um, which fits the 11 inch iPad uh, pro in my case. And then the, the bigger one, um, is able to fit like I, I think uh, as much as a uh, uh, like a Windows machine in there if you wanted to. Um, also inside is a very handy little uh, clip for your uh, keys, which is nice. So you can easily access your keys. There are some pouches in there for pens and you know pencils and maybe your la your uh, wallet if you'd like. And then uh, coming along with this, I went ahead and. Uh, got a Waterfield tech pocket. And so I wanted to talk about this as an extension kind of of the bag. Uh, this is also that waxed canvas material. And what's cool about the tech pack, tech packet, no, the tech pocket is that it has this magnetic uh, area at the top of the pouch. And so you can sort of stick your finger in there and open it up and get uh, your devices inside. I love they show uh, on the on the site kind of what you can put inside of it. So you could have you know a, a, a charger and a cord, and then inside you could have um, if, even if you if you get one of the newer ones, it fits uh, the uh, the new iPad Mini as well. But there are these really great little pockets inside of here, great for storing kind of loose items, and it's that same very soft material. So I could put my sunglasses in here, feel like they're safe, along with maybe my AirPods. Pro case or what have you. And then this pocket magnets. Ah, oh, God, I love that sound here. Let's, let's see if we can't get this Foley. It's kind of quiet, but you can hear that magnetic snap as that closes back. And then there's a pouch right there on the front too, again, with that beautiful orange. So it matches the sling. Uh, so this waxed canvas matches with the sling and the orange uh, interior. And it comes with uh, a nice like carabiner clip on the side um, that you can use. You know, you could put this on the outside if you wanted to, on the inside if you wanted to. Um, I just keep it inside of the bag. But the last thing that I wanted to mention about this bag, you can tell I very much like it. Um, this, this, so this front panel is, um, is leather. That's not what I was going to say, but uh, it ages very well and over time kind of adds character. You see these scratches that I'm making with my uh, fingernail. That's because it is this beautiful, um, rich leather, but you can warm it up. Uh, if you if you get a bunch of scratches that you don't like, you can uh, warm it up with like a hairdryer or something like that and then um, sort of brush it and the oils will kind of redisperse and uh, take care of that. But then the, the thing that I did want to mention is the strap has this excellent locking uh, clip that you can lift up very easily. It, it's hard to lift because I'm not, uh, I don't have it on, but if I was wearing this, this clasp lifts up super easily and lets you make adjustments on the fly. Uh, it glides along this, this sort of seatbelt like material, this nylon strap. And then once you get it to the precise fit and feel that you want, you can clasp that. So what's nice is so what's nice is while you're walking, you can have it really tight on your back, but then whenever you want to get something out of it, you undo that clasp, you can loosen it, you can swing the bad boy around to the front of you and be able to get something out of it, or you're able to take it off very easily. So I think this thing is fantastic. Um, because it's what I like about it is that uh, a sling bag that goes on your back as opposed to one that's by your side is a little bit better on your um, it's a little bit better on your frame. Uh, it, it the way that the person's wearing it right there, not great <laughs> uh, for people who are listening, the person's sort of wearing it just on one shoulder, but strapping it across your body and helping to more evenly distribute that weight is better than having a messenger bag that sits to your side. Um, 
So I, I think it's really pretty cool. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I love what um, Waterfield is making all the time. And this in particular is a really cool bag. I saw uh, the, the Sutter Texling has an option to get a little case that you could put like a stylus in and some pencils and pens. And so whenever you order it, you can add that kind of to the, the box um, for an added amount to be able to uh, keep your, your styli and everything uh, secure as well. But yeah, that is the Waterfield um, Sutter Texling. It starts at $169. These are beautiful handmade bags, uh, you know, rich leather, wax canvas, you know, premium materials. And uh, the Tech Pocket uh, comes starts at uh, $49. Um, I can a thousand percent uh, back uh, Waterfield on the, you know, I, I swear by Waterfield's products. In fact, um, I've got another one right here from the company that I've had for quite a while now. And it, of course, uh, the reason why it stood out to me was because it's green inside. And this one, uh, it, I usually keep my 11-inch Surface Pro laptop inside. Or I still think it's a little bit bigger than um, 11 inches. But my Surface Pro laptop goes in this bag. And uh, it's a great shoulder bag as well. And folks, it still has that beautiful leather smell. It is uh, Waterfield makes some very cool stuff, and uh, yeah, you're, you know, for people who care about that kind of thing, you're supporting um, local uh, creators, and uh, if you're in the U.S., U.S.-based creators. So yeah, that uh, that's the next thing I wanted to mention because we've got all these products, but what do we put them in? Well, in my case, got some bags for that. <laughs> Yeah, I've got the now discontinued Waterfield start backpack and I love that. The the gold lining is really great though. I've been using Tombem bags more and more recently and they're made up in Seattle um, and their they're stuff's really good. I've got their uh, Icon messenger bag recently and that works brilliantly for uh, my iPad mini when I take it with me. Um, and speaking of the iPad mini, I mentioned something sort of as a throwaway earlier where I was talking about the MagSafe Duo and the chat room has said, hang on a minute, what, what, what? What are these magnetic cables? So I'm going to do a minor detour and talk about the magnetic cables that I've got, as well as the other cable I was going to talk about. So I've been using, thanks to the recommendation of a friend, charge ASAP cable. So it's USB-C at one end, and then the other end is just, well, it, that's it. That's the end of the cable. It finishes and it's flat. Um, and these can do, sort of do 100 watts of power transfer. So what you get with them is you buy these little uh, tips, and then they just magnetize into your device. Now, if this were plugged in at the other end, instead of just sitting on my desk, it should light up and charge things. So I have a USB-C port here, I'm going to see, there we go. It is lit up and actually charging. So I will actually be able to charge my AirPods from this, or for example, I can then use that same cable, the exact same cable to charge my iPad mini. And this can be really helpful when you're, you're traveling. Cause I, I don't know about you, Micah, but it always feels like I've got lots of devices and I've got, you know, one that uses mini USB. Why? To use micro USB, great, thanks. Uh, lots of things using USB C, and then uh, you know things using Lightning, and it always feels like I've got the wrong cable available. So by switching a lot of my things to using uh, these tips, which I pretty much just leave in the devices, um, then uh, I've been able to get away get from a lot of these charging issues because the cable by my sofa that I charge my laptop with is where these charge ASAP cables. Now, I was asked in the chat room, how firmly do these hold? So I've just unplugged the other end um, from my computer just so that I've got this handy. And I will just put it on like here. So if I'm just wobbling the cable a bit, it's not going anywhere. But if I do hit it, then it does, you know, move off of the device, but then it pops back on. So I found when I'm charging, say, for example, my iPad and I'm, or my laptop and I'm moving them around a lot, then, you know, it can break the connection and then rejoin. So you'll get the dunk where the, the sound effect where it recharges reconnects to charging. Um, but I found these cables to be quite good. They are $35 for a set. So that's a cable with one of the tips and then you can buy extra tips separately. So I've got a couple of the cables um, and a lot of the tips because it means that my Kindle, for example, now charges with the same cable as my iPad as you know, my AirPods and everything else. Um, and I should note, I've got one of these in the AirPods uh, Pro um, uh, case, uh, but I can still use wireless charging. So I just use whatever charging method is most convenient for me because that is really useful, um, I have to say. Now, for people who are there going, oh, I'm not sure about magnetic charging, you know, that seems perhaps a little crazy. 
I have an alternative recommendation, which are these colorful cables from Anchor. They also come in black if you want plain black, um, but these are the Anchor Powerline 3 Flow cables. They were originally uh, debuted as the Anchor Soft cables, um, but they are quite soft and flexible. They're pretty strong um, and you can get USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to, uh, to Lightning. So if you want to charge an iPad or an iPhone, you can get whichever one um, and they come in three and six foot lengths. And I found that these are great cables to have on my desk because they are colorful. So it allows me to I immediately identify which cable is this. Um, and they come in uh, a green for you, Micah. They come in purple for me. They come in pink, um, uh, white and black. Um, and they're, they're pretty nice cables. Um, and so I would say a good charging cable ought to be part of your accessory kit. Um, and, you know, the, the cables that Apple give you on the box with your device, they're they're fine. Um, <laughs> but nowadays I tend to just leave them in the box and use whatever cable is most appropriate, be that the magnetic one or uh, where these anchor flow cables um, elsewhere. So I actually use the anchor flow cable with the MagSafe Duo because you know what? Spotting a purple cable running across the room is much easier than spotting which of these white or black cables is this uh, when I'm looking mm -hmm. for the cable, you know, wh where did this get plugged in again? Oh, right. It's in that port over there. You know, it's, it's much easier to spot. So uh, yeah, that, that's my, uh, my, my cable tip. Awesome. All right. We're going to come back in just a moment with some more accessories for you to check out. But first I want to take a quick break so I can tell you about BlockFi who are bringing you this episode of iOS today. Whether you're a crypto pro or a total beginner, you can finally earn Bitcoin the easy way with the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card from BlockFi. You can earn unlimited Bitcoin on every qualifying purchase you make. This is, of course, the introduction of the BlockFi Rewards Visa Signature Card. It's the easiest way to get Bitcoin by just making everyday purchases. That's what I love about this. It's like, hey, you know, maybe I wouldn't want to get into Bitcoin on its own. I, you know, oh, you know, how do I go and buy some Bitcoin? What do I do? How much to? But think about it as being something that just sort of happens passively in the background. A way to experiment with Bitcoin without needing to sort of. Um, uh, actively kind of pay attention to it. Uh, you can grow your Bitcoin portfolio when you buy groceries, when you pay your bills, when you fill up at the gas station, or, you know, for me, like when I'm paying for my uh, subscriptions each month, Netflix, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera, all these different uh, ways that uh, my credit card gets charged each month. You can earn 1.5% back in Bitcoin on all qualifying purchases with no reward limits. Plus, there's no annual fee and no foreign transaction fees, just Bitcoin earned on every single qualifying purchase. It's like, not only is this a cool card because you get to do Bitcoin stuff, it's a cool card because it's a good card. No annual fee, no foreign transaction fees. Now is the time to start or ramp up your Bitcoin portfolio. Bitcoin saw a 230% annualized return in 2020. In fact, Bitcoin was the best performing asset of the last decade, outperforming the NASDAQ 100 by 10 times, according to Yahoo Finance. BlockFi is a leader in crypto and was named to Forbes FinTech 50 list in 2021. Plus, BlockFi is the easiest place to buy, sell, and earn crypto. There's no better time to sign up and start earning Bitcoin today. Right now, our listeners can get a bonus of $25 in crypto after you make your first purchase with a credit card when you sign up at this very specific link at BlockFi.com slash iOS. That's a $25 bonus in crypto deposited right in your account after you make your first purchase. But you have to use our URL, BlockFi.com slash iOS. Start earning Bitcoin back on all your qualifying purchases today. BlockFi.com slash iOS. And I've got some terms and conditions for you here. Not all will be eligible. Geographic, regulatory, and underwriting restrictions apply. Fees and terms are subject to change. Additional terms of service at BlockFi.com. BlockFi is a financial technology company. Banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Thanks so much to BlockFi for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today. Get out there and earn some Bitcoin. All right. We are back from the break. And we talked about uh, some excellent uh, cables for charging your device. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to talk about 
is uh, just sort of an understanding for folks who are, uh, you know, in the market for an iPhone 13 or maybe have an iPhone 13 and are looking at case options. So give me a second here to pull up this box. All right. One of the popular case manufacturers, uh, you may have heard of the Incipio and Survivor brands. I got some of their cases here and uh, they have uh, run the gamut of uh, different case options that you can have for the um, for the new iPhones. And of course, these come in all the different sizes, depending. I've got the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So these ones are built for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, I think I'll start with the Survivor options because so Survivor, um, these are cases that are built built to last and built to protect your device very well. Um, they are, it says military standard drop tested. So uh, they drop these bad boys from a good height and make sure that they're good to go. Uh, and then it's got uh, enhanced grips on it so that it will hold in your hand. And uh, as well, what I love about this is that um, these companies are being more mindful about uh, the impact of these cases because you get a new case uh, every year or every time you upgrade your iPhone or maybe multiple times whenever you have your iPhone because some folks hold on to their iPhones for quite a while. Um, and so this Griffin Survivor case, it's a clear case and it looks pretty simple, but it's got these really nice um, grippy sort of diamond shaped edges on the side. Uh, what I love about it is that the case itself is raised very high um, on the, the back of it so that that way the camera lenses are uh, protected quite well. And the phone slides into there and it is um, a way to kind of still get to see your device after it's done. So this was uh, dropped from six feet. It's six feet drop tested uh, with the clear case. The other one from Survivor here is this one's really cool. It's called Endurance. Uh, and it has three layers of drop protection instead of just the, um, you know, the one layer of drop protection from the other clear case, which is kind of like if you wanted a slim case, you could do that. This has 14 feet uh, of drop protection and a um, built-in MagSafe compatibility. So you'll see it's got that circle there with the uh, little spot down at the bottom. And yes, uh, built into this case, it is one piece, but there are three total layers of um, material that keep your case kind of safe or your phone rather safe from being dropped. Uh, this one feels really nice. It's got uh, sort of some rubberized edges on it. The buttons are raised and uh, plenty of space for the, you know, the speakers at the bottom, uh, but it's, it's uh, quite firm. And with that MagSafe uh, set of magnets on the back, it's very nice because you know you'll be able to use it um, with the device that you have there uh, to be able to charge it. Oh, and I forgot, this one also has antimicrobial defenses built in. So kind of a, a neat thing if you want to make sure that it's super clean, you can do that as well. Um, and then I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, yeah, both of these are, are made with recycled plastic. So uh, you can feel a little bit better about the environment there. And then the other cases I have here are from Incipio. I'll go through these a little bit quicker. I wanted to talk, this one was also a 14 foot drop test. Um, oh, and the package itself is also um, made with recycled paper, eco-friendly recycled packaging. This specific case, the Organicore Clear case, is a two-layer fused uh, protection case. Not only is it really pretty, it's got these um, sort of sort of tan sides with these beautiful peach buttons, but this is also 100% compostable. This case is compostable. So I could put this in the compost heap or send it off to be composted, and it would um, disappear into the ground as it's supposed to. Very cool. Um, that it has uh, the this organic core material. And what I like about this one too is that the buttons are these kind of, um, they're, they're separate from the case. And so they are very responsive whenever you're pressing them. You can really feel it pressing against the buttons underneath. Um, I'll go quicker on the rest of these. This was the one that I really wanted to highlight. There's one more that I really want to highlight, uh, but I'll talk about the, the two others. There's a nice clear grip case uh, from Incipio. So again, if you do like to have uh, your phone kind of shining through, um, then this one is great for that. It's got grips on the outside as opposed to just on the inside. So this is a great case for someone who might be a little bit clumsier or feels like they need to hold their case um, a little bit 
better with their hands. Uh, so that's the, the grip for MagSafe. And then the Duo for MagSafe. A lot of people, uh, when it comes to Incipio, they really like these Duo cases because what um, Incipio does is they pair an internal sort of soft silicone or rubber uh, material that goes around the device and then a harder case that clasps onto the outside of the case like so. And so you get this nice, not only this two-tone approach, but it provides some better protection because you've got those two areas, those two layers of protection that are very clearly there. And then I also like it because sometimes you just need to clean off kind of the outer layer. So you could pop that out and easily clean it off as you need to pop it back on and you're good to go on to the next thing. Um, yeah, it just, it feels nice. It feels like you're sort of double wrapping your iPhone in protection uh, with the Duo. And once again, um, built-in... Uh, built-in magnets for MagSafe. And this one also antimicrobial uh, material so that you can keep your self protected with that. And then last but not least, this is the one I think is super, super cool. Um, it is called the Incipio Optum case. It's a protective case, it says, with cooling technology. So this case has, um, it has graphene in it. It has graphene inside to absorb the heat from your phone, and then it, ex it, it, it um, sort of moves it to the outside of the device and has it go through these little air vents that are on the outside. So your phone is touching this graphene layer, and the, the heat kind of dissipates from the inside all the way to the outside where there are these air vents that can help move heat away from your phone. So you can think of this as a way to uh, keep your, if you're doing lots of video on your iPhone, so you're planning on shooting some of that, um, that uh, uh, what is it called now, cinematic mode video, or you're playing a game like uh, Pokemon Go that can make your phone pretty hot, this Optum case can be great for that. I also, the thing that I'm thinking about doing is keeping it in my uh, car. And whenever I get in my car to, um, to use it for GPS, I can pop this onto my phone and help cool down my phone while it's kind of sitting up in the uh, window uh, being used to uh, navigate me to wherever I'm trying to go. So yeah, that's the Optum case. 16 foot uh, drop tested. They do talk about how it's... Um, uh, per purpose designed to like be good with uh, 5G. So you might might have been worried that because it's uh, um, you know graphing that there could be an issue. Uh, this was optimized for 5G. But I think the super cool thing is just that that uh, fact that it's made with this uh, graphene built into it to help it to better dissipate the heat. And like all of these cases that I showed off, um, made with recycled materials and plastics so that you can feel good about uh, that part of it as well, that you're not getting a case with that. So yeah, that uh, Optum case is just pretty nifty. Um, but all of this, this whole lineup from, wow, I can barely hold them in my hands, this whole lineup. Oh Lord, I just pushed key keyboard buttons um, from Incipio and Survivor here. Uh, are, are pretty neat and some great options for you for your next iPhone um, if you are wanting to go outside of the Apple line. I do use um, day in, day in, day out, I use my, uh, my leather case from Apple. Um, but as I said, I've got these different situations where one of these cases is a great option uh, to help me, you know, take video, take photos, et cetera, uh, or in my car where I need it to kind of be cooler because I do run into that issue sometimes. So thank you for uh, hanging out with me on that one. What is next, Rosemary? Well, I've mentioned this one before, so I'm not going to spend a long time talking about it, but some people like me have come from a smaller phone and they're now using a bigger phone and they want something to make it easier, but they love wireless charging. Wireless charging is amazing. MagSafe charging, doubly so. But sometimes you just want a pop socket on the back of your phone and pop socket have a MagSafe pop socket option. Um, and so what you do, you, you grab your phone, you grab your MagSafe pop socket and boom, it pops on the back and that's it. It it's not going anywhere. I've tried this on a Pro Max. There, there is no chance that this is going off. To get it off, you do have to like pull it away from the phone and then it comes off quite easily. But once it's on there, it's it's not really going anywhere, which is great. Um, and I'm a big fan. I have this one in the Nebula. Um, it also comes in black um, and opal and a few other colors. And if you love the PopSocket, but you love the idea of the MagSafe wallet, they do a... Uh, 
Pop Grip for MagSafe Wallet as well, which is another great option for people um, because I know a lot of people like to have all of the options available to themselves, um, but you know don't necessarily want to lose out on the ability to have an easy way to hold their phone. And uh, I'm going to temporarily use my iPad mini as a table. You can also use this as a stand and it'll prop your phone up as well, nice. which is quite nice. So uh, that, that works pretty well. And it means that you can use all of those um, pop socket um, clips or something. So maybe you've got a vent mount for a pop socket, then you can you can hang it on there as well, um, regardless of which option you've got. So this is pretty nice. It comes off really easily when you want to use MagSafe charging. So I pop it off at night, put it on the side, pop my phone on the Belkin charger that I've got there, which actually, Micah, you recommended to me a while ago. And uh, it's great. I, I love it. it. It works really well and it keeps my phone just, you know, standing up to one side when I put it down on its side, or I can easily pop it off and then pop my phone back on the charger. Beautiful. Uh, the next one I wanted to mention is, so Nomad makes a whole bunch of really cool products, but one of the things that I love are their incredible, um, super strong cables. And not only are they super strong, but they are also uh, built with uh, utility in mind. So this is the, uh, they call it the Nomad Goods Universal Cable uh, with Kevlar. It's built with Kevlar, so that the cable is very strong. It's got this braided uh, exterior on it, and it comes with a nice cable tie built into the, onto the actual cable. So you can easily wrap this up and, uh, you know, lock the cable tie and it's good to go. Now, this one is the US USB-A model, because some of us do still have USB-A ports uh, hanging around. I do. Um, I've got one on my desk that's two USB-A, two USB-C. And so this is usually plugged into it. So it's USB-A on this side, but you pop this universal cord around, and this is where the magic is, because there is a micro USB port um, on the end of, or not port, but uh, cable on the end of it. And with this, there are two adapters that are just built onto the end of the device. There's one for lightning and one for USB-C. So I can charge my Kindle with the USB, the micro USB uh, cable and a few other things that I have, like uh, batteries for um, my doorbell, rechargeable batteries for my doorbell and all sorts of things. A lot of different Bluetooth headphones have US, micro USB uh, charging. But anytime I want to, I just slide up one of these other cable ends and I can click it into place. And suddenly now I have a lightning to USB-A cable. And then if I want to, I can take that one off and slide up. And now I've got a um, USB-A to USB, if I can get it to go on there, um, a USB-A to USB-C cable. And so all of these um, are right there on the end. So one cable to kind of uh, do all that I need it to do. It wraps up so nicely. Uh, this can go in a bag very easily. But, uh, but again, most of the time it just sits at home because I switch out different things that I want to charge on my desk. Um, Oh, the connectors are also made of metal, uh, so you do get stronger connections there at the end um, where, you know, we could be kind of rough on our cables, and this is helpful for that. Um, now, I'm being asked if the cable is USB 3.1 data. Um, I do not believe so with this USB-A one. However, Nomad makes a USB-C universal cable where one side is USB-A and it has a, or I think it's USB-C, and it has um, the ability to uh, drop a USB-A onto it, if that makes sense. So let me go back. Let me go to the Nomad site. Um, uh, I've and, got the link. I'm just trying to put it into the show notes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so under universal cables, there we go. Um, the one that they have is it's USB-C on both sides. And then one of them has a USB-A change and the other one has a micro USB uh, change on it. So you can, uh, or is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you can switch between those. So in any case, um, really cool that uh, it's got this nice Kevlar material. Um, it is, let's see, it's rated at uh, 100 watts. Uh, so it's a USB-C uh, power delivery cord. This is the, the USB-A to USB-C one. Um, and then the one that I have is, let's see what it's rated at, the USB 
Universal Cable USB-A is rated at... Uh, they don't have that listed. Interesting. Um, oh, supports up to 2.4 amps at 5 volts, so 12 watts um, of quick charging. So this is a much lower uh, charging level because it is, it's is—it's an earlier cable with USB-A on one side. Um, but it, as I said, it lasts a long time. And it's good for all of those devices that I have that aren't USB-C these days. I've got plenty of USB-C cables, including um, one that is plugged in right now to my iPad, which is also from Nomad Goods. And it's just their USB-C cable uh, that's made with Kevlar. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of different cables from Nomad that are very high quality, uh, that last a long time. But I think those universal cables are uniquely uh, interesting because of their ability to uh, switch between those two modes so easily. Uh, I right. actually really like that particular kind of cable where you've got the interchangeable ends where you have to pop one over the other versus the kinds of cables that you can get where they've got three or maybe four different ends. Because I originally gave my parents one of the cables with three ends and I very explicitly explained you can only use one at a time. And two weeks later, I get a phone call from my mom. Hey, the cable you got us isn't charging things. And she plugged it in two devices and expected it to charge both. Um, and that was the point where I then took it back. I returned it and I got them actually the same one that you got recommended there, uh, Michael. They've had it for a while. Um, and uh, funnily enough, she no longer has that problem because she can't try to charge multiple devices at the same time. It's fairly obvious it's not connected. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm hoping that, that that stays true to form. Um, but, you know, cables are great, but sometimes you don't want cables. In fact, sometimes you want the teeniest, tiniest charging option ever. Um, and I've mm -hmm. got one of these from Satechi, and this is for my iPad, and it's an Apple Watch charger. What? So it's just this you, little puck what? and you plug it into a USB-C. It also comes with an extension cable, so you can just plug it into something USB-C. Um, but this will plug into an iPad mini now, an iPad Air, an iPad Pro. Um, and it just uses the battery from your iPad, which already has pretty phenomenal battery life to recharge your Apple Watch. Um, so I'm going to pop my Apple Watch off of my wrist and plug that in over here on my iPad mini um, so that I can show you. And there we go. It uh, will in one moment. There we go. It's charging. Perfect. Um, so wow. this does work perfectly. I'm I'm really impressed with these. Uh, for people who are curious, this is uh, English lavender uh, coloring um, for the Apple Watch woven band and the the iPad mini case. But this is this is brilliant. Uh, it's got a teeny tiny LED on the end. It's almost impossible to see. Um, if you are in a dark room, then you may be able to spot it. But equally, it's quite possible that you would just point that end of the iPad at a wall and then you you wouldn't see that anymore. But this, this is great. They also do another one of these, which is an AirPods Pro Qi charger. Um, so um, it's a small wireless charger that, you know, is perfectly sized for AirPods Pro. Um, so sometimes you've got a couple of little devices going uh, available there. But I have to say this one is one of those ones that I keep this and a uh, small anchor magnetic battery in my bag um, at all times, um, because this way I can charge my iPhone, uh, if I've got an iPad with me, I can recharge my Apple Watch from that, or I can plug this into the battery to recharge it from there. Uh, this is $40. It is not the cheapest Apple Watch charger, but also it is incredibly compact and there is no cable that you can break, um, which I think is definitely an advantage for some people. Um, I'm always amazed at how uh, quickly my grandmother goes through cables. Um, so I'm probably <laughs> going to get her some Kevlar ones for the next holiday, Micah. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Um, all right, folks. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the first segment of the show. These accessories we wanted to tell you all about. Of course, there are more uh, out there. We've talked about some of them sometimes during our app cap segment. Um, and I'm sure we'll come across more, but we did want to uh talk to you about those uh, kind of ones that we're using uh, pretty frequently. Or in the case of those uh, cases, I just thought, you know, folks want to know about other cases out there that uh, they might get for their iPhone that they can count on, I think is the big thing. Because uh, you can buy one of those super inexpensive cases on Amazon. It's like 49 cents. And then you get it and it yellows and it cracks and it's terrible. Um, or you can wait, uh, or you, I mean, you can you can sort of invest a little bit in a case uh, that's going to last you a while and sometimes comes with some cool new technology like graphene. So up next, we have got our news segment in just a moment. All right, folks, it is time for the news. And we have some late breaking news as of this morning. Apple has officially announced its next event, 
called Unleashed. Uh, this event will take place on Monday, October 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, widely believed this will be Apple's M1X MacBook Pro event. Uh, so this will be an event focused uh, mainly on the next iteration of Apple's uh, various laptop computers. And uh, so we might not see a whole lot in the way of uh, iOS uh, but Rosemary and I will cover anything that needs to be covered for the show, uh, particularly if, you know, there's some updates on Mac OS and when it comes out and, you know, the shortcuts integration that's there. But um, are of you... course, the always rumored AirPods rumor, uh, which yes. apparently was rumored to happen last time or an AirPods refresh didn't happen. It might happen I, this time. They might just appear on the, so. the, the store afterwards. We don't know. Yeah, because Amazon has um, has had a deal on AirPods um, for a, a little bit now. And I wondered if that deal had anything to do with the fact that um, Apple was getting ready to sort of refresh the stock there with new AirPods Pro. Because, yeah, you can get uh, AirPods Pro on Amazon for you know some amount of money off. I'm not sure how much. Um, I think it's about $50 and, at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought about doing it because... I need new AirPods Pro. My AirPods Pro, which are out of warranty, but would probably be covered for what's wrong with them. I just don't want to go through the whole hassle and rigmarole at this point. Um, would be able to uh, would be able to you know update those and get a new pair that um, has you know new technology. Because at this point, they've been rumored for so long. If I were to buy a new pair right now, or even spend the seventy bucks to get it fixed out of warranty or whatever. That's just a waste of money when I could get a newer version that has, you know, whatever new technology is built in. So I am really hoping that this event has a um, has an update for the AirPods line. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great if uh, if it does. They've Whoa. got all these uh, funky features. If you go to apple.com slash uh, events or slash apple dash events, I've forgotten the URL now, um, then uh, you can tap on the Apple logo and you can get this amazing effect, uh, which Anthony is showing off from the studio, where you can also see his wonderful desk uh, with everything set up to make a sound and look professional, which is always appreciated. Yes, indeed. Um and I, yeah, so they always do these uh, AR things and um, we'll see how much AR is at this event, given that it's supposed to be uh, the the Mac event, but we will, we will stay tuned. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention is that uh, the new iPhone uh, Pro models. Uh, so if you've you know, heard about the, the new iPhones, you probably have at this point, the iPhone 13 and the, the Pro models, uh, the Pro and the Pro Max, both feature the ability to do, because they have a 3X um, ultra wide uh, lens, or no, excuse me, a, a 3X zoom lens, not ultra wide lens, a 3X zoom lens. Um, with that means that the iPhone can do some pretty cool macro photography. And if you are rocking an older model iPhone and wishing that you too could do macro photography, well, I have some good news for you. Uh, Halide, the incredible uh, photography app for the iPhone, has added macro photography mode to the uh, app. And now here's what's cool about this. It's very good for using it on an iPhone 13 that actually has a special macro photography with that uh, zoom lens, but it enables macro photography on phones as far back as the iPhone 8. So even if you don't have the new camera with the new fancy photography mode, um, you would be able to take uh, macro photography with this uh, with this new or with this update to the app. What happens is that <clears throat> the app will look at all three or two or however many cameras you have on the phone, and it will use whatever lens is getting the closest photo that it can of whatever it is you're trying trying to take a photo of. And so it's uh, it's smart about kind of understanding what looks good. And then it uses AI and machine learning magic, as uh, they always say, to improve upon the photo. So uh, yeah, there's this great uh, photo here. It's the iPhone 13 Pro at the right and the iPhone 10R with a macro attachment on the left. Um, it depending on you know what you're taking and how you're taking it, one could look better than the other. Um, I'm going to show you how to use it here on the iPhone. Um, 
So if you've got this, uh, if you've got the the Halide app, which I think everybody should own, and it's a fantastic way to take photos, you tap on the autofocus button and you tap on the little, as people are used to, the little um, flower, and that is macro mode. And then from there, you can tap on something to uh, autofocus to it. I can get closer if I want to or farther away. And then I can snap the photo. You'll see that down at the bottom, it was switching 0.5. This went 0.7. Uh, I can get closer and we'll see what it goes to 0.5 again. I will take this photo boop, and it captures it. And then what it did was it took the photo um, possibly with multiple lenses and used the information that it had to take the best possible photo that it could. And then from there, it runs it through kind of a you know, an al algorithm to help sharpen the photo, make it look better um, than it would be on its own. And you can see uh, the, let's see, the HEIC version of the photo uh, looks like this. And it took that photo and we cropped it in even more with the final uh, JPEG um, here. And wow, look at the, that detail there. You can see that little, I don't even know what that is on, on the top of this uh, ink bottle, but um, there's this little sort of fiber um, that is very tiny and you can see it very clearly with uh, halide. Now, I think this is amazing that it, it you know, it enables people to take uh, macro photography without having to have the latest model iPhone because I think macro photography is really fun. I really like macro photography uh, quite a bit. So yeah, um, that is uh, an update for Halide. If you don't have the app, you should totally head to the App Store and get it right now. Let me look it up really quick uh, so that I can see how much it costs because I do not recall off the top of my head. Uh, Halide Mark II in the App Store is free to download and then it's uh, $2.99 a month or $11.99 a year. Uh, or you can pay a one-time $49.99 uh, fee to own it forever and sort of get the updates. Uh, so we'll include a link to that. I, I think Rosemary, you uh, have used and enjoy it. Uh, both Leo and I have both recommended Halide in the past. Renee Ritchie uh, recommends recommends Halide. It's a very popular app because they are among the first to hop on the, um, the you know the new features and functionality that's available in, uh, in with the cameras and with iOS whenever they uh, get the chance. Yes, yes, they are. It's it's a very nice application, um, and my dad frequently uses it as well. And he he loves taking pictures and has uh, recently pretty much given up using other cameras because the iPhone is just so good nowadays that uh, unless he really wants to lug DSLRs around, it'll do everything he needs. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. What's next? So next, we've got two lots of updates. So AirPods Pro and AirPods Max firmware have updated to add Find My integration. Now, for people going, wait, how do I update my AirPods Pro firmware? It, it's a case of wait, wait some more, wait some more. And then at some mm -hmm. point, they will just update themselves. Ideally, put them on charge, leave your phone nearby. Um, probably also on charge, and then it will update. Um, but then it should have the Find My integration, which will render the AirTag attached to my AirPods Pro irrelevant. Uh, fingers crossed, because I have another user lined up for this one. Um, but it means that uh, you, it can, you can search for your AirPods nearby. You will probably... Like I, I tried doing this earlier, but my AirPods hadn't updated, and forcing them to update takes... You know, you, you can't do it. It is a waiting game. Um, but I don't think uh, it can make um, a really loud sound at the very least the AirPod Pros, because if you think about it, the speakers are inside the AirPods in the case. So that is, you know, if the case is closed, which it probably should be, then it's going to take uh, a lot of volume to get some sound that makes it out of there. But uh, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that it works out um, when I actually get a chance to test this. I don't know if, Micah, you've had a chance yet. No, I. Um, that, oh, that's the other thing that I forgot to mention. The other reason I want new AirPods is because no matter what I do, I cannot get these, ins insert bad word here, uh, AirPods to update to the newest firmware. Um, I, you know, I, I do all the secret behind the scenes magic to monitor the uh, firmware update. And for folks who are, you know, a little bit savvy, you can plug in your iPhone, 
to your Mac, you can open up an app called Console and uh, sort of see the messages that are being sent about your iPhone and what's happening on it. And with that, it will show you firmware updates and things like that for your different devices. And I've watched the logs and every time it tries to update the firmware on the AirPods Pro, it um, errors out every single time. And what's worse is that not only does it error out, but I've reset my AirPods. I've, you know, factory reset my AirPods. I've uh, tried with all the different troubleshooting steps I know how to do, plugging them in, not plugging them in, running them dead first and all that kind of stuff. And these things will not update. And so that's another reason. I just, I think that they're just all sorts of broken at this point, um, which is probably people are going, why would you want to get new um, AirPods Pro if you've had such an issue with them? That's how good they are for me. Like, they have been such a genuinely good experience whenever they did work that these errors that I've run into um, are not enough to outweigh how great they were um, and how simple they were for using them. And at a price that I feel comfortable with. Because yes, I could go for the AirPods Max, but it's just too pricey for me um, for what they are. Of course, Mike, and mine have now typically updated, uh, you know, after I finished prepping for the show and said, fine, I guess you're not updating then. Um, <laughs> and uh, so so it's now updated. And uh, in, in the app, I'm not going to show this on screen because uh, I've not managed to change my home address for today. Um, it does um, have play sound and directions. So I could get directions to my AirPods Pro. Uh, I won't play the sound just yet. I'll test that and report back next week whether or not um, it has uh, the, uh, uh, you can actually hear that, uh, especially if you're in a different room. Uh, but yeah, I'm, you know, I'm excited. Uh, hopefully this air tag is now redundant and I can put it elsewhere. Um, but you know, there, there seems to be good things coming for the AirPods. Uh, but speaking of updates, we should mention that Apple has released 15.0.2, which fixes a messages photo bug and it has a security update in. Um, and one of the bugs that it also fixes is the iPhone leather wallet with MagSafe might not have appeared in Find My before. A lot of people were having this issue where they would try to add the new Apple wallet to Find My and it would fail. Um, this, fingers crossed for everybody, should fix that. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that it does. Me too. Fingers crossed because I really like that feature. I've been able to get it to work successfully and uh, it, was, it was very nice to use. Um if you're in Australia, you'll be happy to know that uh, if you get Butterfingers within the first seven days of you of owning your device, well, don't worry because you'll get uh, you've got Apple Care Plus coverage uh, for the first seven days of of having it. It'd be nice if that was everywhere, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, that really would be. I mean, I remember when I bought my first iPhone, I bought a 3GS. I bought it from a carrier store here in the UK, Orange. They no longer exist. They are now EE. Um, and one of the guys uh, was very insistent that you should really buy the insurance because multiple people had bought the iPhone and then immediately dropped it on the marble floor outside of the store and, of course, shattered the screen of their iPhone into multiple pieces. Uh, I didn't take out the insurance. I did not break my iPhone 3GS screen, but I did also buy a case on Amazon before I went to buy the iPhone and, and put it straight in the iPhone as soon as it came out of the box. Um, so, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I got lucky there. But yes, for all those people who, you know, are worried about breaking their iPhone as soon as they pick it up uh, for, for the first time, you know, the fact that seven days complimentary cover is included in Australia is lovely. So I would love to see that elsewhere. Yes, I agree. Bring it to more places, won't you? Um, oh, uh, this was an interesting piece uh, over on... Uh, well, so it was not originally on Six Colors. I uh, forget the original source that I saw it from, but um, we will find it here. Um, Stephen Trodden smith perhaps? I remember he tweeted much. about it. Um, he's he's a app developer for iOS, among many other things. And uh, he, he definitely yes. tweeted about it. And I saw his tweet first. Uh, so the developer, uh, Jeff Ver Verkoyan, uh, who is the staff engineering lead for Google design on Apple platforms, um, talked about, um, this was a cool thread on October 7th of this year, uh, started a thread saying, this year, so as of 2021, uh, my team shifted the open source material components libraries for iOS into maintenance mode. Why? And they go on to talk about how essentially uh, what the team decided to do was go all in on iOS, on iOS. So instead of trying to make um, Google's material design, uh, which is the, the design language it uses on Android, instead of trying to bring that to iOS 
using iOS's platform, but Google's rules and sort of going through all the trouble and struggle of making that work, they said, let's just embrace what um, what Apple is, what Apple you know has chosen for itself. And so I think this is you know this is a really cool nerd read. If you are even you know slightly a nerd and you want to read more about it, you should. This is a cool thread talking about it. Um, Going all the way back to 2012 with the launch of um, Google Maps on iOS and uh, continuing on from there, talking about kind of how difficult it can be to make a new design language or a different design language work on a platform that is obviously stuck within its own design language. Uh, And so really cool story there that's uh, worth checking out. Yes. Yeah. And it, it'll it be interesting to see how these things change and how people react to it. I know, for example, uh, my mom was having uh, an issue with the iOS mail application and I suggested she try the Gmail app and she tried it for about two minutes and said, I don't like it. It doesn't look right. Um, and she wasn't able to explain. She doesn't know, you know, what material design is and so on that made it not look right to her. But I think you know, conforming to the conventions um, of a platform can be useful. It will mean that Gmail doesn't look exactly like Gmail on the web when you open it, but that's probably for the best, let's face it. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, this is this was one that I celebrated. Um, if you've ever, if you have an Apple TV in your house and you have um, an iPhone in your house, then you may remember a few times, uh, rather annoyingly, when you go to your Apple TV and you have a search field or a password field or an email field, and you get a buzz in your pocket or on the table because your iPhone is saying, hey, I see you're trying to type into a text field. Would you like to use your iPhone to do so? Which, let's be clear, That is fantastic to have a keyboard right there on your iPhone to be able to type into those text fields versus swipe, 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 beep, swipe, beep, swipe, swipe, beep, beep, swipe, 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 beep. That gets old. That's annoying. That is a struggle. But what's also annoying, old, and a struggle is constantly getting that every time you pop out of a text field and into a new one. So uh, there for a while, you had the ability to turn off that uh, notification for using the keyboard whenever you're connected to the Apple TV and you're trying to use, uh, you know, a text or trying to enter text into a text field. Uh, Then it went away. Luckily, in iOS 15.1, which is in beta right now, that feature has returned. And so it's likely that we will see it in a future version of iOS that rolls out to the public. So if you... um, wanted that feature back uh, by feature, I guess we mean the ability to turn off the feature. Uh, Worry not because it's just around the corner. And you know what else is just around the corner? It's Shortcuts Corner. Folks, this is Shortcuts Corner, the part of the show where you write in with your shortcuts, questions, and requests, and the Rosemary Orchard hits you back with some shortcuts responses. Um, Our first Shortcuts Corner request comes from Daniel, who writes, I like to listen to music when I read. Okay, first of all, Daniel, that is interesting, and I don't think that's anything I could ever do. So I'm really impressed, but let me continue instead of editorializing. So I set up a shortcut to play one of my playlists when I launch either the Books app or the Kindle app. However, if I switch away from the app and then back to it, the shortcut runs again. So it stops what I was listening to and starts a new song. Also, there are times when I'm listening to music via another app and don't want to stop that music to play the playlist. Is there a way for the shortcut to check to see if audio is already playing before it starts playing the playlist? Also, is it possible to check whether I'm connected to Wi-Fi, and then Daniel hopes that you can even go as far as to check a specific Wi-Fi network, before doing something in a shortcut? I'd like the shortcut above to only actually start playing music if I'm at home and thus connected to my home Wi-Fi, since there are times I read while I'm out in public and I don't want music to play then. Daniel, what an interesting shortcuts request. 
I have a feeling we've got an answer for this one. Rosemary's got an answer for this one. We do. We do indeed. Um, So I'm just going to pop up my iPhone here on the screen. So I'm in the shortcuts app. I'm in automations. Um, So Daniel, you've done this already, creating a personal automation uh, for when an app is opened. And then you've chosen uh, the books app and the Kindle app, you said. Uh, I've got books here. So I'll just select that one for now. Um, And then obviously your your shortcut app, plays music. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to bother with the specific playlist option. Um, I'll, I'll just leave that one blank. You know, I think everybody can figure out uh, what it is they need to do there. So your first question is, how can I tell if audio is playing? Okay, because this is what we need to know. Um, so if I type the word play into um, into the shortcuts actions search, then I can see a whole bunch of things, including um, get current song. So what you could do is you could try get current song to see whether or not something is there. And so if we put get current song, I will move this play music down uh, or I will try to. It's gone a little wonky because uh, I'm running the beta. And then we can just do an if action. We pop the if in here. And then if current song does not have any value, then you can uh, just play music. Um, And I've deleted the otherwise because we don't need that. So that's what you can do there. Now, this should work. It, it, it absolutely should work. I have tested this with YouTube videos um, and other things, and it did seem to be working. Now, there might be um, occasions where this doesn't work. And for that, you could use Toolbox Pro. Now, Toolbox Pro is an app Love we've it. talked about before. It's fabulous. It has this action called Is Audio Playing? And you can just pop that in there instead, um, and you can return this as a number. And then you can just say, um, if it is uh, zero, Okay, because it's zero and one. Zero is uh, false and one is true. Um, so if audio is playing is false, then, uh, you know, play. And then you, you'll you just need to change this. Um, it's only filled that in because that was blank. So the next part of the question, Daniel, is can I only do this when I'm at home? Now, there's a couple of ways you could automate this. Um, and you're looking at the Wi-Fi network option, which is pretty good. So what we can do is we can get uh, network details. Okay. So we can get our Wi-Fi networks network name and that's it. And then once again, we just wrap this whole lot in an F because there's no point doing anything else if we're not at home. Um, and then if the network details, um, and then we can just say is, and then you type in the name of your home network. So I can say the promised LAN because that is my network name. I'll delete that otherwise, and then I'll just try and drag the end if. Nope, that's not working today. I'll just drag these options in there. And there we go. So this is what we end up with. We get the name of the Wi-Fi network. If our network details is um, whatever your network name is, then we check if audio is playing. And if there is no audio playing, then we play music. So we've got two if statements inside of each other here to achieve this result. But fingers crossed, uh, that will do what it is that you need to do. And the next time you open the books app, it should play music. Pro tip for people, make sure your ask when running is disabled for things like this, where you actually want it to just play music in the background. So uh, there we go. That's it. That's beautiful. Beautiful. I love it whenever it can be uh, a relatively simple solution there. And again, shout out to Toolbox Pro for being awesome in all of the extra tools you can add. It's like a Toolbox Pro is an upgrade to shortcuts. Um, you sort of make them more powerful. This next question or uh, shortcuts corner feedback comes from Walt. Walt writes in, all I want focus mode to do is turn itself on when my calendar says I'm in a meeting. I can't find a setting in my meetings to turn that on. Siri doesn't seem to be smart enough to do that automatically, and I can't figure out how to use automations to do it. Have I missed something? Walt from Lower Alabama. I seem to remember this being a feature in uh, iOS of of, of, uh, versions past, so surely this can still be there. So it wasn't exactly a feature. It's one of those brilliant things that neither is nor was a really a thing, but it also was because we all saw it. It would appear on your lock screen. You'd be in a meeting or a meeting would be coming up and it would suggest do not disturb. And that doesn't happen anymore. Um, and unfortunately, directly within shortcuts, just based on your calendar event, that's not a trigger. If we go through our personal automations here, um, you know, we've got maybe when an app is opened, if you always put open a certain app for meetings, you could use that. Um, um, there's CarPlay, things like that. 
there's also time of day. So if you know that you have a meeting at 9.45 a.m. every day, then you can turn on focus mode for us at a specific time. But if you're going to do that, you can also just do that straight in the settings app under focus modes. The difficulty with this is, is determining when a meeting is starting, because I personally know I have quite a few things in my calendar, which aren't necessarily things that I don't want to be disturbed for. Um, and there was some great discussion about this actually on the Automators Forum. Automators is another podcast I host with David Sparks. Um, and um, the, people were talking about uh, this and the suggestion that I made there, um, so hopefully we can link to this post in the show notes, is um, to use push cut automation server or push cut somehow. So there are two ways to do this. Basically what you can do is you can grab all of your calendar events. If you're not, if you don't have an iPhone or an iPod touch running around, like I do here, I've got an iPod touch running push cut automation server. Um, then you could just schedule notifications to get sent to you that you tap on at the start of a meeting and it enables that focus mode. If you do have an automation server, then it can queue up um, those uh, automations to uh, actually just turn on the focus mode at the correct time and then turn it back off at the end of the meeting. Don't forget that part. Um, but just natively in iOS, this isn't a feature. So what I would like to suggest that you do is you tell Apple that you want this. Um, and that is apple.com slash feedback to do that because I feel like this is a missing feature. Um, and clearly you do as well, Walt. And I'm sure many of our listeners do as well. So uh, please tell Apple that you would like to trigger focus modes based on calendar events because I know I'd love that. Amen. That would be fantastic. Please and thank you. All right. Moving on to feedback and questions. The first one comes from Mario. Mario says, Hi, I need to go back to basics. I'm the minutes taker for our group, and I need to type notes on my magic keyboard during meetings fast. On iOS notes, are there some presets that can be set to type notes fast? For instance, holding the delete key and writing an email can fast delete multiple characters. This does not seem to be the case in notes. There's also no undo button, not si nor size and font change, etc. I'm basically looking for a similar type of typing experience on the iPad that I would have on a Mac. Please help. The key is speed and ease. If it can't be done in notes, any other simple recommendations? Uh, then the hands clasped or hands pressed together emoji, and then Mario. Um, I my, my first thought is that, yes, the Notes app, while it is a great note-taking app, it's not a great meetings meeting minutes app um, because it wasn't really designed for that. There are lots of different basic note-taking apps out there. I'm sure Rosemary um, has a few that she'll talk about. The one that I was going to mention that you might even mention is um, Otter Voice Notes because with um, Otter, let me see. I think otter.ai is the the name of the web, the website otter yeah otter.ai will will get you there and we'll include a link in the show notes to the app this lets you um, record the meeting while you are taking notes on the meeting and then it will transcribe the meeting so not only do you get sort of the notes that you're taking and it's purpose built for notes but it also lets you sort of hold on to what's what conversations are happening in uh, a, a meeting and be able to pull that up later. Because that's one of the things that gets kind of annoying is you miss something and then you don't remember quite what, what it was that was talked about. Um, it is also like, if there was ever an app that was designed for taking notes on, a, um, on an iPad, Otter is one of those for sure. It is very good at what it does. Um, yeah, and, and so that's that's one that I would recommend uh, for you. But uh, Rosemary, what uh, what were your thoughts? Well, my first thought here was actually that Mario should try keyboard shortcuts uh, because I, I'm guessing that Mario maybe has missed the fact that with option backspace, you can delete an entire word. Um, and with command B, you can make something bold, command I, italic, command U, underline, um, and so on. And if you press and hold the command key on your magic keyboard, uh, Mario, then you'll see a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts pop up. And that will allow you to do things uh, more easily from the keyboard in notes. Um, and I've, I've put a link to the, the Apple support document for using shortcuts um, on 
um, an Apple external keyboard with iPad. Um, that's what they call it. Um, but it, at the bottom, it shows this overlay that you get if you press and hold the command key. Um, and so there you will actually see the keyboard shortcuts available to you in whatever application that is. The app that they're demoing there is Pages, but this works in, key, in, in uh, Notes as well. Um, so that can be really useful. Something else they link to there is text replacement, which is something you can set up in the settings where if you type, for example, OMW, then it will automatically change it to on my way. Um, and so you can insert, you can create text replacements and use uh, some keyboard shortcuts that will help you out here, um, which I think is probably going to be the best place to start because if you start with uh, things like that, then uh, you, you'll be doing, you know, pretty well. Now, if you want great note-taking applications, you're probably going to end up looking for something like Notability. Notability would be my absolute go-to for this. James in the chat room is agreeing um, because it can record um, and uh, I can handwrite actually. And I frequently use the Apple Pencil uh, on my iPad mini to handwrite the notes um, at, in Notability while people are talking. And then um, I've got that recording. And when I'm playing back the recording, I can actually tap on a section of the notes and it will go to the recording at that time where I, I made that note. And this can be incredibly useful if you realize that maybe you were making another note and you've forgotten um, what, what it is that somebody was saying. Just draw a big question mark, come back to it later, tap on the question mark, rewind a little bit, and, and you're good to go. Um, so that would be my suggestion there. You can type as well as use the Apple Pencil. So you can use Notability with your Magic Keyboard or with an Apple Pencil, whatever works best for you. Um, but I think there are two or a couple of very good options there. Um, Otter is also really good. Um, I, I pay for the Otter service myself um, for a variety of uh, projects and uh, it's it's very good at transcription. It can even incorporate into Zoom. So if your meetings are on Zoom, um, then it can do uh, pretty well at that. Yeah, I was going to say the one um, holdout I have with Otter is the fact that the company has grown pretty quickly and is uh, focused a little bit on the sort of business market. And in doing that, um, it's gotten a little bit pricier and has less of a focus on uh, sort of the individual consumer. <clears throat> so you may run into issues there where it could be rather you know costly. But if you're doing this for work, uh, there's always the argument to be made that uh, you know if you've got the the right manager, you can talk to them and say, hey, you know, you needed me to take notes. Um, this is what I need to take notes. So I'd like to have this reimbursed. Uh, so there are some free options out there for you in terms of uh, improvements on the basic notes app or some of these options that we talked about here with uh, with everything else. Oh, James in the chat uh, mentioned Keep It, which is uh, an app that I use as my sort of collect all um, heap <laughs> uh, that has all of uh, the different stuff I find online uh, in it, as well as, you know, all sorts of stuff, documents and everything. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next one, which comes from Harry. Harry writes in, I just set up a Uficam C24 in HomeKit. Uh, so this is a security camera, a HomeKit security camera. It says, is there a way to use shortcuts or Siri to see the video on my Apple TV? Currently, the camera is pointed out a window at our porch. Any other tips or tricks that you can think of that will be helpful is greatly appreciated. Thank you all for, or thanks. Wow, I'm always getting this wrong. Thank you for all you both do, Harry in upstate New York. Uh, thank you for writing in, Harry. Thank you for those kind words at the end. Um, yeah, the first thing to know is that in the uh, latest version of tvOS, there have been significant improvements to uh, HomeKit notifications. And so I, for example, um, have two things pop up on the Apple TV whenever I'm watching something. Uh, I will get uh, camera notifications that pop up like during a show because I have them turned on and then I can easily tap into it to see. And then uh, notifications for the garage door opening and closing as well. And so those are both available for you to see within the, the sort of notifications area. I, I'm hold, sort of holding my hand out because it's up at the top right corner on the screen. Um, but as Rosemary will tell you in uh, just a moment, there are also, I would say, I would say there are also, but really it is, there is also an app for that because it's about the only one that I trust um, to do what I need it to do on the Apple TV. And all of the other ones out there, I've tried a lot of them. Almost all of the other ones out there are garbage 
and they are just out to take your money. This one is not that. It is made by someone we recommend relatively frequently on this show. Um, so tell us about uh, HomeCam. Yeah, so HomeCam is an app that does one thing and it does one thing only. It's on your iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, and on your Mac. It's called HomeCam HomeKit Camera Monitor. Um, and basically, it just shows you all of your camera feeds. Um, and it's really simple. You can even set it if you have multiple feeds to rotate between uh, all of them so that it will show um, you know one of them and then move on to the next one, kind of like a security feed, um, which is, is quite nice. Um, and it also shows you a little bit of information about the room um, inside of the app as well. So you can see whether or not lights are on and things like that. Obviously, this is probably less useful for your front porch, um, but you can rearrange the cameras as well to put, you know, whatever camera you like most at the top. Um, and, you know, I, I find it works really well. It, it does exactly what it's supposed to. It actually also has Apple Watch support, which I forgot about, um, but it it will show you your HomeKit camera feed on your Apple TV. And it's a really easy way to just open the app and then, you know, view it. Um, because of course you can do that. Um, you can also just ask Siri um, with your Apple TV remote to show me whatever the name of the camera is. So for example, for me, it would be um, show me the hallway camera and it would show me the hallway camera. Um, and that works. So um, yeah, there, there's a couple of options there. But uh, Aaron Pierce, the developer behind HomeCam, has also developed several other applications, Home Run, Home Pass, Home Scan. Home Pass is one I use all the time. Um, and uh, yeah, it's basically a, a way of just keeping my HomeKit code safe because a lot of these devices come with codes and you know, then you, you lose them because the sticker falls off of the device or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. then you, you, or you put the, the IKEA hub in a really logical place in your TV unit, Micah, when you're recabling your TV <laughs> unit and then you have to scan the code on the underside of it. Have I done this recently? Maybe. Am I a little bitter about this? Possibly. Did I immediately put it into HomePass? Definitely. Um, so uh, yeah, Aaron Pierce has made some great applications. He's very involved with the HomeKit community as well. Um, so uh, yeah, that's a great recommendation that I can make. All righty, folks. And with that, we come to the last segment of the show. It's time for the App Caps. Folks, this is the part of the show where we wear silly caps atop our head to honor our picks of the week. They may be apps, they may be devices, but these are things for iOS, iPadOS, etc. that we think you should check out. Maybe we've been using them for a while or they're new to us and we think that they are worth your time. Rosemary Orchard, tell us about the cap atop your head and tell us about your app cap. Well, the head atop my head is one I've had for a while. It's a classic. I like pulling it out on a regular basis. I wear this in public because I'm very dramatic. And it is a large black hat. Uh, it's just got a very large brim. It's round on the top. There's a little bow at the back. It's pretty. It's elegant. It works. Uh, I'll probably wear this out tomorrow because I'm, I'm going out with work. Um, so I am going to talk about a great application which nearly made it into the news segment, but I yoinked it at the last minute. And this is called home devices. And this is a free application. And the purpose is to see what your existing device can actually do in HomeKit. So this ties into Harry's question here and probably some other questions that other people have got as well, because you can also add to this. So if you've got a device and it's not here, then well, you can tell them about it. Um, and you can see what HomeKit devices can actually do. Um, so I'll just pop back out of the settings. I restarted the onboarding uh, setup so I could show off that. But you can see there's 537 accessories in here, and that's just the ones they've documented so far. Um, and so you can look through here. And what I like about this is it's not just about learning about a device that I already own. I can also go, hey, you know, an irrigation system sounds pretty good. What irrigation systems are there that are HomeKit compatible? And I can get a look at some of these. So for example, the, the Ratio, I think it's pronounced, is one I've heard frequently recommended. Um, and you can see what automations it's got uh, when it activates program modes, when it's in use, um, and what conditions you can use um, for it as well. And then I can search for it on Amazon UK because it recognizes that I'm in the UK. 
I can also then add it to my wish list. And this is great because I, I've, I've got so many things, Micah, that I want to get um, home automation wise. Um, so it, it's really good to see this sort of stuff. Um, but as I'm going through, you know, I'm spotting things like this Xiaomi light sensor. I have a Xiaomi light sensor. I've paired it with my Akara hub um, and that's in HomeKit. And, you know, I, I can see this. I can see the events. Um, and so on, and just decide, you know, which of these devices, if I'm looking for an air purifier, which air purifier is it that I want to get? Well, I've, I've got the smart me. Um, and so I can, you know, see options about that. Or if my parents are going, Hey, we want a doorbell. I can go, well, it looks like there are four doorbell options right now. Um, I've not heard of the Robin ones before. I have heard of Netatmo, a French company and Logitech. Um, you know, I'll, I'll probably recommend one of those. And this is just great if you want to dive into the world of HomeKit and you're there going, I would really like to get an occupancy sensor, for example. What, what occupancy sensors are there? Or what smart outlets can I get? Um, this is just a great way to find out what options you've got and also um, what um, you know automations they can offer. Now, James in the chat room is asking, does this work with Homebridge devices too? This does not work with Homebridge devices, James. This is only working uh, or this only supports home kit devices. Um, that, that's all they've got documented in there. Um, but I think if you contacted them, then uh, they might, you know, they've got an option right there. Why is that popping up? Um, to uh, to um, <laughs> get in touch with them um, so that you can you can uh, ask them if maybe they can add a home kit, uh, home bridge flag and home bridge supported devices. Because I know my Dyson fan, it's not a home kit device. But it's in HomeKit thanks to HomeBridge, um, and uh, that that's something I greatly appreciate. So, uh, yeah, if you want to dive into the world of HomeKit and uh, you're looking for what options are are there, that's one app that's going to help you find it, and it's free to download. Yes, indeed. Um, <clears throat> so let's see here. Uh, that I I I I love that there's this ability to sort of have all of that in one place because right now I go to Google's page or Google's page to Apple's page and it doesn't give you all of the information that you would want. Um, so it, it, it's nice to have this information that is more clear and has all of these extra little uh, tidbits to it. It's uh, definitely for any home kit nerd and it's gorgeous for God's sake. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. sure you like it with that nice purple color. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. That definitely caught my eye. I was actually on the test flight for a while playing with it, um, gave, gave them a little bit of feedback um, as, as they were developing. And I'm, I'm really, really pleased at how great this app is, quite frankly, because it's fabulous. Um, and I'm glad that somebody has put together, you know, the effort to document 537 HomeKit applications, Micah. 537. That's a lot of HomeKit wow. devices. Um, yes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed purely for the tenacity involved in doing all of that, but also, you know. It's a, a great resource for everybody else now. Um, all right. Up next uh, is mine. I'll talk. The, the cap atop my head today is a doggy uh, cowboy hat that I am wearing and is very slowly choking me to death um, because it was not made for me, but instead it was made for a tiny chihuahua. Uh, but it is just a tiny little uh, cowboy hat that is um, right there on top of my head. The app that I want to talk about today is a really cool one. It's called Roger Voice. And Roger Voice is a way for folks to be able to uh, talk on the phone and understand what's being said, even if they uh, have you know trouble hearing what's being said. Uh, it is essentially a voice transcription service that takes place for phone calls. So it will caption your phone calls for you. Um, if you download Roger Voice and use it with other people who are on Roger Voice, then you can do so for free entirely. The calls back and forth will be free. But if you want to communicate with other people, um, and uh, that are not on the app, then you get 30 minutes of um, free use of the app, after which you will have uh, $5.99 a month. Uh, we'll give you an hour of, of talking, uh, of calls, and uh, $29.99 a month will give you unlimited calls. Now, this is a really cool thing because... Um, for $5.99 a month or $29.99 a month, that is not very much money whenever you compare it to uh, when you compare it to how much a, a phone bill uh, typically costs. So let me show you how this works. Um, I've got my uh, iPhone here and I've got a phone number that is just a, um, 
it's a uh, one of those that you call and it's got you know things being said this one in, in this case is um it's like beautiful phrases it's uh phrases made out of words that um are supposed to be so supposed to be objectively beautiful like the most beautiful f- word is uh or, or a set of words is cellar door for some reason i don't remember why there are rules about it but anyway i'll just show you when i call uh this number and i'll tap here to call it uh now it's speaking and it's saying sing in a mountain stream singing in a mountain stream is my idea of a good time and then the voices kind of change um over time as we're going through here uh and so let me see are you able to hear this right now no oh what's happening here I'm supposed to be able to be playing through but um for some reason it is not I wonder if it's because it's a phone call instead. And so it's not playing through it properly. It could be that for privacy purposes. Yep. I bet that's what it is. Um, so I guess, I guess I can't play it for you, but essentially this conversation right now is taking place. It is saying uh, all of these things and you're able to see them in like nice large text on the screen. Um, you can also, along with being able to see what's happening, if I top that settings uh, icon in the top left corner, I can mute the microphone easily. I can switch languages um, from the US to all of these different options. Um, I can also turn on speakerphone. Oh, I can hear it now. The hogs were fed chopped corn and garbage. Much of the story makes good sense. The sun came up to light the eastern sky. The two met while playing on the sand. The ink stained dry. And so there you get an idea of kind of how it works. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it back off of uh, speakerphone. And um, then along with being able to see the text on screen, you can actually, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can type back. So if you were having a conversation with someone, you see their text pop up in the captions, you could say, no, yes, hello, uh, I would like a meeting. On which date do you have availability? There are numbers right there. So you uh, can use the computer voice to respond to the person there as well. I think this is such a cool accessibility tool um, that anybody can make use of as they need to in order to uh, make and take calls um, with other folks. So you can see my credit, I've dropped down to 25 minutes because I'm currently using it without a subscription, but I could add it if I want to, wanted to. This is a super um, simple app in its sort of uh, execution, but it's beautifully designed and it's such a well-designed app for such a specific uh, use case. And that's why I think uh, it deserves it deserves a, lo- a look. So that is Roger Voice, available for free in the App Store. In-app purchases of $5.99 a month, $29.99 a month for uh, unlimited use. And uh, yeah, so if you are in need of um, hearing what is you know better being able to uh, sort of hear what's being said either by reading it, uh, then you are able to use this app to do so. There's a great little video that kind of shows how it works, how it works. Um, you can read it there. You can talk, you know, over your phone and uh, be able to see, okay, that is what I heard. Or if you can't hear entirely, then being able to sort of read what the person said and respond as you need to. Or as I said, um, if you want to be able to communicate uh, without your voice, then you can use the built-in uh, voice to to do so. So really cool uh, Roger voice on the App Store. Folks, with that, we have come to the end of another episode of iOS Today. If you have questions, feedback, shortcuts, requests, etc., email those, iostoday at twit.tv. That's also a great place if there are apps um, that you want us to check out uh, or that you think deserve to be featured on the show. I'd love to, we'd love to hear your ideas as well. That's always fun. Um, <clears throat> of course, you can uh, tune in live to watch us record the show if you'd like by going to twit.tv slash live every Tuesday at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, 1600 UTC. Uh, but the best way we think for you to get the show is by subscribing to the show, which you do by going to twit.tv slash iOS and clicking to subscribe either to the audio or video versions of the show and Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, Pocket Cast, Spotify, etc. Uh, we think the best version of the show is the video version, but we do try to be mindful and make sure that we describe things for the audio version of the show as well. So if uh, that's what you prefer, you can totally get that as well. Um, 
this is a great time to mention that if you'd like to get all of our shows completely ad free, well, you should check out Club Twit because Club Twit will get you a pretty cool thing for seven bucks a month. Every single one of our Twitch shows ad free. You get your own personal RSS feed, which is kind of cool. You get access to the Twit Plus bonus feed that has outtakes, behind the scenes stuff, uh, stuff from us hosts that you're not going to find anywhere else. And my favorite thing, which is access to the members-only Discord server. It's a place to chat with us hosts and your fellow Club Twit members, as well as uh, others in the Twit family. Great place to go to hang out. If all that sounds good to you, twit.tv slash club twit, seven bucks a month. Plus, now that we have Anthony Pruitt as our content manager, did I say Anthony Pruitt? Weird. Now that we have Ant Pruitt as our content manager for Club Twit, we are getting lots of cool stuff uh, happening every week, uh, pretty much in Club Twit. So that becomes even more valuable as time goes on. You want to check it out. Seven bucks a month. That's less than a Netflix subscription. Not only will you be uh, supporting your favorite shows, but you will also uh, be getting access to some awesome stuff you can't find anywhere else. Um, oh, which uh, makes me, which reminds me, uh, if you are a listener via Apple Podcasts, which many of you who watch or listen to iOS today are, there is also the option to support a show directly. We got some feedback that, you know, some folks, they didn't want to spend the seven bucks. They, you know, preferred to support their favorite show directly. And so now in Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe to a specific show. So in this case, for $2.99 a month, you head over to Apple Podcasts, you find the audio feed of, uh, of iOS Today, subscribe, and you will be supporting our show directly. So that's a fantastic way to say thanks to Rosemary Orchard and myself um, and say, hey, you know, this is, this is great, the work that you're doing. Uh, it also signals to the leadership as well that, uh, you know, what we're doing here on the show is awesome and rocking it. So if you've got an extra two ninety nine, dollars you feel like throwing out, we would very much appreciate it. Yeah, you just search for iOS today in the uh, Apple Podcasts library. And in there, you will see above the episodes list, a thing that says ad-free audio episodes of iOS today, two ninety nine dollars a month. So if you subscribe to that, you get the audio version free of ads right there in the Apple Podcasts app. Rosemary Orchard, if folks want to follow you online and check out all the great work you're doing, where do they go to do so? If you go to rosemaryorchard.com, that has links to the places that you can find me on the internet. And you can also find links to me on social media. If you want to jump straight to Twitter, though, you can follow me with the username Rosemary Orchard. Micah, what about you? Well, I am at Micah Sargent on many a social media network, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where I've got links to the places I exist online. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to yet another episode of iOS Today. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Have you ever read a tech news story and thought to yourself, man, I would love to talk to the person who wrote this to find out more information? Well, that's exactly what Micah Sargent and I, Jason Howell, do each and every week on Tech News Weekly. We read the stories that matter to us. We reach out to the people making a break in the tech news and we invite them on to tell their story. And you can find it at twit.tv. Look for Tech News Weekly every Thursday.